welcome to uh, another episode of Mark Harville Art. In this painting tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating adding the final touch to this painting, which is my oil palette. And <clears throat> from the previous videos, you saw that uh, I painted everything in acrylic to begin with. And the reason I like to come back with oil is that I typically can get more vibrancy, stronger, bolder colors with my oil paints. And I can do some very nice glazes. And all around just sort of adding that really final cherry on top that really helps to um, complete this painting. What I'm doing right now is I've come back and I'm taking a yellow ochre and this is just pure yellow ochre right from the tube. I don't have any painting mediums um, that I'm using at all. This is directly from the tube and I've just added it to a palette knife and I'm just dotting it on um, with my smaller pointed palette knife. i um, getting very nice fine little texture here. The paint's very thick. It really stands off the canvas and it's a nice contrast because when I paint typically in acrylic it's it's a much thinner paint um, layer and so it's really just following that that fat over lean rule um, and it's much bolder that way so um, getting some nice fine detail. Now I'm coming back with a little glaze here. I've used liquid and I've mixed kind of an orange color here and I wanted to create a bit of a glow so I'm just kind of outlining um, the little silver lining here uh, with a little bit of an of orange glaze that um, I think will really help to add a nice a nice bit of a sun glow here and then I'm coming back with pure um, titanium white and I'm just creating that final little um, silver lining here from from that uh, that sun and that'll really help to kind of distinguish this get it a little bolder and a little more uh, vivid. Using my small rigger brush here, I can add that final uh, titanium um, silver lining here. So it's really coming through here now with the oil palette and I'll be kind of working all throughout the painting and I, and I won't be staying too long in one specific section. And then I'll just kind of step back from the painting and I'll really look at the whole painting uh, as a whole to, to see what I can improve upon. So coming back on our night again, I've created another glaze here. It's just a, a dark gray glaze that I created with ultramarine blue and, and burnt umber. And I wanted to kind of improve upon some of the shadow of the horse and um, really wanted that to set, kind of uh, stand out a little bit better. I'll come back now uh, with some pure titanium white and just a very small amount of, of uh, yellow gold um, or gold uh, green. And what I find is that it if you have a small amount of that um, kind of yellow, yellow green or a gold green um, mixed in with your titanium white, titanium white, uh, it actually helps the white to even look brighter. So just a little, a little hint there. If you if you mix it in appropriate quantities, in other words, 99% white and just maybe one or two percent uh, of that that gold green, um, you'll find that it, it takes on a very, very bright effect. 
So coming back here um, and just improving upon some of the grasses, kind of highlighting some things. I wanted to bring in some more twigs now and in our bush uh, by using carbon black and then come through and kind of start adding some silver lining here. Um, the paint again is still very thick and, um, and I can come through here on the tree trunks and on some of the branches and we can really get uh, a nice silver lining here. So this is really an area where we can begin to refine and add final touches and final improvements. And again, stepping back, looking at the painting as a whole and just figuring out areas of additional improvement that can be made. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm taking here a little bit more yellow, adding it to my yellow green, um, adding some titanium white, really highlighting and brightening up those, uh, those spots there. And I apologize, you can probably hear the trash truck outside right now as it's banging around, but uh, can't always have everything absolutely quiet. So I apologize if you can hear that additional background noise. So um, coming through here with just little dabs and globs of, of titanium white and adding a final little touch of uh, a little glow here from, from that sunshine since these trees and these bushes are gonna be really backlit. Just doing some subtle brightening but you just want to jump around. You don't want to have solid lines. You don't want to have too large of masses. Just really kind of broken lines and jumping around a bit more. Making uh, use of your negative space and um, allow that background and, and underpainting to, to kind of work for you in this regard. But I want to just improve upon the bushes, improve upon the silver linings. And, uh, you know, using this to add, um, add to the individual leafing. And this will just help to uh, really create some nice variety and some really good contrast. It'll help to solidify that bush uh, with those individual branches and leaves. And then now coming through again and just improving upon some of the highlighted grass regions um, and going through and just generally adding a little bit more silver lining and sun glow and, and improving a lot of those um, highlights so that the, the shadows will really stand out a lot better uh, by improving upon those highlights. And so it's a really good balance uh, and relationship between our shadows and our lights. And I'm using a tiny little uh, round brush now. It's a 20 over zero brush, very small head. And I'm just kind of coming through and improving on our, on our little grasses and bushes here throughout the boulders. And looks like I've kind of cut myself off a little bit here on the camera, which I didn't realize. So I apologize for that. But um, I wanted to come here uh, and just make, again, individual little leaves. Um, that'll really help to, I think, balance out these bushes so that they don't look like they're just one large, dark mass. So again, you know, because this is the refining stage, um, I'm stepping back quite a bit, usually about six to eight feet from the painting which is usually the average viewing distance. Um, and then looking at the painting uh, as a whole, once again, I've mentioned that, and, and picking out areas that I know I can, I can improve on. But you wanna keep the paint rather thick, as I mentioned. Um, I'm not really using any thinners uh, or any mineral spirits. Um, if I glaze, I'm glazing with um, a little bit of liquid, um, uh, sometimes I like to use alkyd um, thinners, but uh, for the most part, this is really just um, the the paint right from the tube on my palette. 
and I'll just mix it and uh, not really add any mediums here because I really want to have this paint pretty thick so that once it dries, if you if you ran your finger across the, the uh, MDF board, you would you would find that um, it is pretty rough and there's a lot of texture. Um, and, and you know, that I just wanted to add that it adds a little level of interest. And when you hang these paintings um, with a light over them, um, that light will pick up the those those ridges of thick paint, and it'll just add a really neat little uh, effect to your painting. Now I've mixed together <coughs> a um, little bit of sap green, a little bit of ultramarine blue, um, just a just a dab of red. Um, I like to oftentimes put a little sienna or a little orange or a little red into um, the greens, uh, in this case trees and bushes and so forth, because um, it's a complement color and it'll sort of uh, help to desaturate it. Um, if I need it to be desaturated. In this case, because we're in the shadow region, um, I do want it to be desaturated and a little uh, darker. So by adding a little bit of red, that'll that'll help it. Adding a little blue uh, will also keep it cool because we are in the shadows and you'll want your shadows to be nice and cool. So um, just a little helpful tip on there. So now I'm coming back to my reflection. Now that I've kind of emboldened the colors of kind of that uh, that bright gold that I mixed, um, I want to also reflect that into the water. So just kind of gently sliding it on. There's not a lot of paint on the brush. You certainly don't want a lot of paint. You just want it to be um, pretty dry brush um, technique here to, to add that. Now I was, um, the previous videos that I'd done on this painting, um, I did kind of do a live narration as I painted. In this situation, I, I couldn't do that. As I was painting this final oil layer on top of um, this acrylic, um, I had lost my voice actually. I was, I um, had an upper respiratory infection of some sort, lost my voice, I wasn't able to narrate it. so. I had to wait for about uh, five or six days, let my voice kind of start coming back. I don't totally have it back, but um, enough that I could come back and I could um, I could narrate it uh, via audio this this way. So um, that's kind of why this this particular tutorial video is just a little bit different than the other few that I did uh, on this medieval painting. Now I mixed together here. Um, I have a little magenta now that I've mixed with some uh, a little bit of um, purple and uh, a little white um, and you know a little yellow actually because with purple um, yellow being the complement color once again this is the same the same rule is that uh, it'll help to desaturate it since it's a complement color it'll darken it sort of gray it out because we're still working in the shadows uh, we want to make sure that it's fairly desaturated and now coming back and adding uh, with a dry brush technique just a little bit more highlight to my distant trees here on this on this small um, little mountain we have Kind of outcropping into the water. So um, get that a little bit brighter, um, adding a little bit more interest. Um, I feel like, you know, that would be some of the sun glow would be kind of hitting that. And it also helps to, uh, again, add that rule of contrast, having our lights and darks to add another level of interest here to the painting. And it helps to add some, some more distance and depth, a little bit more layers. Um, from our our value system so 
Now I'm coming back and adding some individual stones now um, into our bridge and helping to really kind of seat that a little bit better and make it a little more three-dimensional. So I'm just using a pure titanium white and I'm keeping it pretty thick on, on the brush using a small round brush. And I can come through here and just kind of jump around and add a little bit more of the stonework um, just to, you know, really, um, really help to make this look a little bit more like a castle or a fortress and, and um, add, add some more texture to it. So just taking a little bit of time, keeping it, keeping it pretty slow and, and really you, you need to slow down when you're doing this. There's no doubt about it. This is really the final detail phase of the painting. So I'm coming now through here. I've mixed um, some umber with my uh, ultramarine blue and some and some sap green, keeping it really cool. A um, little bit of of uh, cadmium red as well, but uh, mostly blue and green. Um, and we're going to come through here and and do a little bit of highlighting on our on our bushes. Um, I've added a little bit more white to the mixture so that it's a little bit brighter. And um, now I can really add those highlights here and, and add a little bit more depth into these these little weeds and bushes um, that we've got going on here in the foreground. So using my small palette knife um, I can just have little little globs of paint just like I did in the trees um, and, and just add it this way. These little palette knives are really handy for this particular technique to to really have some really nice individual leaves throughout uh, throughout this this whole kind of weedy section that we have here and kind of bringing it out into the grass region but uh, you don't want to do too very much just kind of jump around a lot and um, again I'd step back and just kind of see what I thought and if I needed to add something somewhere else. So taking a few moments here and, and just kind of improving upon some of these bushes here in the foreground. And then I can move into our little path here and I wanted to mix together an, um, this is an, a yellow ochre. Um, I. I would say that it's mostly yellow ochre from the tube. Um, I did add just a slight bit of cad orange to it um, and a little bit of yellow, but mostly it's just the yellow ochre. And uh, I wanted to add just a, a very subtle highlight, even though we're, we're, we are working in the shadows, most of the sunlight, I wanted to keep kind of focused in the background. Um, but still having some subtle highlights into our shadows here in the foreground. Um, I'm just being kind of kind of cautious and not keeping it, you know, too bright. So it's pretty 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 desaturated, um, and just kind of kind of keep that in mind. Keep in mind where I want to focus the attention and, and where I want to lead the eye. And I really want to lead the eye kind of into the back. I want to get it beyond the foreground. I want to focus your attention to the back of the painting, focus it into the castle, focus it through the path and into the sun rays and toward the knight and horse. And that was really the, the goal here is to focus that attention. And, so I've made a tiny little glaze here with uh, ultramarine blue. I'm just adding a little bit more shadow uh, with my glaze, kind of kind of darkening it, kind of making it a little cooler as well. Um, so I'm really kind of mixing kind of a 50-50 a with liquid and a little bit of ultramarine blue with a little bit of uh, burnt umber. Um, and kind of improving upon some of our shadows now. 
and it's just a judgment call. I think I had I did a fairly decent job of having it pretty pretty dark and pretty cool to begin with, but I do like to go through and, and tweak things a little bit more, change certain values, um, and uh, you know, again, increasing our lights, increasing our darks where, where necessary. Got our little bird now, and he's it's a little hawk. Uh, he's uh, going to be flying down to settle in on, on this branch. So very, very small, fine uh, little brush that I'm using for that at 20 over zero, small little head. And um, just taking my time. It's going to be a silhouette. It's, it's going to be very dark. And, and so being nothing more than just a silhouette, I, I just need to just have the basic the basic shape of our of our little hawk here coming to roost down on this on this branch thought it would add a, a, a certain level of interest um, as well and really kind of stand out in contrast with that blue sky in the background well we're coming to the end here now I'm going to sign my name I appreciate you watching I hope that was helpful that's just how I kind of come through here and add our oil paints. Um, sometimes it's it's a lot more in depth than that. Sometimes it's a little less, but it's just enough that I can really kind of round out this painting. So I want to thank you so much for for tuning in, and uh, I certainly hope that was helpful. So uh, I look forward to another painting here real soon, and and hopefully uh, you can join that as well. And Please keep those comments coming. I appreciate those comments. And uh, until next time, thank you. Good night.